Um, this is part of the International Student Career Development Summer Series. Um, and we are going to be delivering 23 career and professional development sessions virtually specifically for international students and alumni. Um, we have a lot of great sessions um, and you can find the full lineup at the links.asu.edu slash intl student career development. I'm going to put that link into the chat so everyone can see it so you know where to find the rest of the links to the sessions in the series. Um, before we get started, I'm just going to go over a few housekeeping items so you know. Um, the session is going to be recorded um, and a link will be sent to you sometime next week. All participants have been muted um, and you can use the chat function to type in any questions or comments that you may have. Um, feel free to type in your questions at any point during the session. Um, and at the end, we will take all of your questions and um, work through them. Um, so for now, I will introduce our presenter, um, Margaret Jarvis. She is the Associate Director of Career Management for the undergraduate uh, student population with JP Carey Career Management and Employer Engagement. Um, I'll give her a chance when she starts to um, introduce herself further and a little bit about her background. Um, and this session is on networking, utilizing LinkedIn. Sound good? Perfect. Well, hey everybody, I'm excited to talk to you today a little bit about LinkedIn. So as Kelsey mentioned, I work at WP Carey in our Career Management Center, um, specifically with undergraduate students. But in addition to that, I've worked actually in the Career and Professional Development Services in the past, so working with students across all majors, all um, education levels and I really really enjoy LinkedIn. It's probably one of my favorite career tools so I'm excited to share some tips with you on networking. Um, throughout the presentation if you have a question feel free to add it into the chat box. Kelsey will be monitoring that so if there's something relevant to what I'm talking about um, she'll jump in and share that question. Otherwise I'll answer anything that I don't get to at the end of the presentation and I'll make sure to leave some time at the end um, for additional questions that might come up. Okay, hey, so today there's a couple things I'm going to talk about. Initially, why LinkedIn? What makes LinkedIn a good professional networking platform? Then we're going to talk a little bit about how to build a network, which really starts with developing your profile, how to reach out to alumni, how to send a professional message. And then really, I would say the most important piece is how to maintain your network. Because while it's important to connect and create several connections on your LinkedIn account, you don't just want to hold them there and then think, great, I have this network I can use whenever I'm ready to find a job. But really the importance of maintaining that network and regular LinkedIn usage. So we'll talk about some tips for that as well. So a little bit about LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is um, a large professional networking website. And the one thing I like about it, especially since a lot of you are international students, is it's used in more than 200 countries and territories, used by people across all industries. So it's not just something that's used in the United States. So whether you're a student that's planning to go back home for work, or if you're a student that's looking for opportunities in another country, or even just networking here in the United States, there's going to be that opportunity to connect with people across all locations and platforms. LinkedIn's mission I added here because I think it's nice to know that their goal really is to connect the world's professionals to make it more productive and successful. Um, and really a lot of people when they think about LinkedIn or initially they don't know much about it, they think LinkedIn is something, a place where I can find a job, another job search engine. Well, yes, LinkedIn is great, a great resource for finding jobs. There's really so much more than that, where the motto, their motto, turning relationships into opportunities, I think that's where the magic of LinkedIn comes in, where sure you can find jobs, but it's really those networks that you can reach out to, the alumni information. The more you use LinkedIn, the more you can access individuals, people, professionals. So that's really what I hope you take away from this too, is the importance of not just knowing what LinkedIn is and how to create a profile, but how to maintain it and maintain that network. 
All right, so in thinking about networking, we're gonna talk about a couple of different things. I'm gonna show you throughout screenshots of what this looks like on LinkedIn. Um, so I encourage you as well to follow along if you have your LinkedIn open because you may have questions on different features or some of the features that I talk about. But the first thing before we think about networking and reaching out to people is the importance of having a complete profile. LinkedIn, their statistics shows that if your profile is 100% complete, you're 40 times more likely to be um, get outreach by for an opportunity. Um, why this is important is because if you just sign up for LinkedIn today, but you don't have anything on your profile, you don't have a picture, and you start sending outreach messages, and that person clicks on your profile, they don't see much on there, they're probably less likely gonna reach out to you, back out to you wondering, well, I don't know much about this person, I can't get a sense of even what they're studying, what they've done. So you wanna start with making sure your profile is up to date. And we'll talk a little bit about the different features and what you wanna do there. Um, we'll talk about your experience. Um, so when thinking about LinkedIn, if some of you are new to the professional world and maybe you haven't even had a part-time job yet, um, that's okay. There's other things that you can showcase on LinkedIn, such as volunteer work, student organization involvement, internships, that can show the skills that you do have. We'll talk about sending out personalized messages and then also joining the in-crowd means LinkedIn groups. So what kinds of groups to join and why that's important. So with the profile, um, and I'll show you a couple of these things. The one thing you wanna start with is the professional photo. This doesn't have to be something that you pay a professional to take. Nowadays with your phone, you can just have a friend um, get dressed up in your nice business clothes, go take a picture, and then here's your new LinkedIn profile picture. You want it to be something where you're the only person in the picture. You'd be surprised, now I still see people having a picture of their family or their wedding picture. That's better used for more social networking websites. For LinkedIn, you wanna keep it to a simple photo of you where they can easily see your face. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the headline, the summary, but you wanna think about your headline having keywords related to your career ambitions. Um, and then also in your summary, when we talk about this, this is so important because when recruiters are using LinkedIn to find candidates, um, that's actually where those keywords pull from is the summary for that search engine optimization. If they're looking for someone that has experience in Tableau or um, Python, they're pulling from that search that they're doing is pulling from the summary. So that's why it's important to have a summary. A lot of people, I would say, they might make their profile all up to date, they have their picture, they have their experience, but they might leave their summary blank. So that's something I want to strongly urge you to make sure you have. Um, I mentioned before about the inclusion of volunteer, extracurriculars, internships. So think about outside of your professional work experience, other things that you've done that demonstrate your communication skills, your ability to work in teams, your ability to take initiative, um, your involvement in community organizations. And then a second step. So I would say once you have your profile, you have your experiences on there, you have your summary, your headline, your picture, the next thing you wanna think about is a step two would be getting recommendations. And this could be from professors or advisors or your supervisor at your internship. Um, because that helps to substantiate what you have on your profile. When starting, if this is the first time that you're starting your profile, I actually recommend starting with uploading your resume, what you have on there, because it's going to give you a good starting point. And then from there, you're able to expand on your experiences. Um, I always tell students that, you know, with resumes, typically we, we say one year for every, one page for every 10 years of experience. But LinkedIn, this is more of your holistic profile where there's no limit on how much you can have on there. So on your resume, you might be able to only show one or two projects, but on LinkedIn, you can show multiple projects and multiple involvement that you might on your resume only highlight the most relevant for the certain opportunity you're applying for. So I wanted to highlight a little bit about the photo and the headline. So I talked about the um, profile photo already. Um, there's also the um, background photo. So the background photo, this is probably in the last couple of years, a newer option LinkedIn has, but it's a way that you can show another piece of your background. So for example, Delaney, you can see a picture that shows um, that she likes to travel, she likes other cultures. So it really can already give you some insight into the candidate, into the person you're reaching out to. Well, Kristan here, you can see a chest. So my thought is he probably likes strategy. He likes 
to solve problems. So you can be creative with your background picture. It doesn't have to just show I like school and school books, um, but at the same time, you want to keep it professional as well. So um, any of these things, if you really enjoy nature and hiking, you can have a background of nature, um, background related to, you know, really, that's where I recommend connecting with your um, career advisor at, you know, ASU, your career coach, or if you're in Fulton, your career coach as well, and we can help you and give you feedback on your profile if you're having trouble with some of these pieces. Um, so for the headline, here you'll see two different headlines. Um, Delaney is a triple major honor student at ASU. So this, I would say this is a good starting point for a headline. Sometimes it might take you a little bit of time to further develop one. Um, but for this, I would say there's probably you know, a lot of students that are in the Honors College at ASU. Um, probably, probably not a lot of triple majors, but still something that other students might also share this. So that's something I might tell Delaney, maybe think more about, well, what are some skills that you specifically have or what's something else that makes you stand out? Um, well, Chris on here, he has helping operations understand their blind spots and create solutions. So again, a little bit more catchy, something that you're not going to see multiple students or professionals have. Um, one more thing about the headline is LinkedIn, they were here at campus a couple of, uh, maybe one or two years ago, and they mentioned on the way employers use LinkedIn is if they are coming to campus, so say Nike's coming to campus, on their view of LinkedIn, they can see all the, they see all the student names and their headlines. That's all they see. So they, um, they LinkedIn gave the example of if everybody had psychology student at Arizona State University and they saw 10 of those, and then they saw this one, helping operations understand their blind spots and create solutions, it might make them more likely to click on that student because their headline was a little bit more unique than everyone else. Um, so that's where the headline is thinking outside the box for that. The summary, I mentioned already about the search engine optimization, but for the summary, a lot of people will skip this part. Um, but I recommend really making sure that you do have a summary. This is something, it doesn't have to be long. I would say even this summary might be the longest I would make one, but you think about putting your summary, what you've done, what you're working on, and what you're wanting to do, or where you're planning to go. This helps if someone comes who has your profile to get a sense of who you are, what your skills are, what your goals or plans are, um, your interests are. So on this student's profile, this student um, is an alumni, I would say about a year ago from ASU. So they have on here a little bit about their years of experience, what they have experience in, in the supply chain field, and then they even laid out the specific areas of expertise. That's really helpful because if, uh, a recruiter, employer, even alumni was looking at this, they could get a quick snapshot of, okay, I can see what this person knows and what they've done, and they have an easy way to connect to them. Here's my email as well to connect to me. So with the summary, I would say similar to the headline, it might take you one or two versions to get it to a place where you feel it's strong, but with anything, your LinkedIn's not something you're going to spend this weekend putting together and then you're good to go for the next couple of years. It's something you're gonna always wanna revisit. Um, I say it's similar to your resume. If you're not currently searching for a job, at least once a semester, you should be revisiting your summary, adjusting it as your career plans and skills have changed. If you're currently searching for a job or internship or a, a career-related opportunity, I would recommend utilizing LinkedIn um, a couple times a week, even if it's just 10 minutes here to adjust my summary, 10 minutes there to reach out to people but making it a regular part of your practice. All right, so with your profile, so on here, you can see a couple of other things that you wanna do with it. So you can take a look, when you go to edit your profile, you can see what it looks like to the public. So the thing with LinkedIn, it's different than other social networking sites where you don't necessarily want employers to find your Facebook or your social media sites. But for LinkedIn, the purpose is that you want to be able to professionally connect. You want people to be able to learn about your experiences. So you want to make sure that it is public because of those reasons. Um, of course, certain things, if you do have your resume uploaded, I wouldn't recommend putting your address, things like that for privacy reasons. But in terms of your experience, things like that, um, it's okay for those to be public. Um, another thing too is with LinkedIn, if you haven't already, make sure that you customize your URL. So as you can see on the top here, 
Um, initially, they'll give you a really long URL with a lot of letters and numbers. I recommended making it something, a version of your name, because you can easily take this link and put it on a resume, share it to somebody. It's an easier, cleaner way to share a link to your profile. And then, of course, editing content, um, you can do that on this page as well. All right, so another I talked a little bit about the profile and you know the things you wanna think about, what to include. Once you've spent the time updating your profile, making sure it represents who you are, now it's time that you can start utilizing LinkedIn for networking. Um, so one tool I wanna to show you is the alumni tool. So on the alumni tool, and you get to this by, in your search bar, you search Arizona State University. Um, then you're gonna see the page um, right here on the right where it'll show you ASU and then you'll see the alumni tab right here. So there's a lot of really cool things you can do. So if this is the first time visiting this page, you can just see in general, there's over 300,000 alumni. It'll show you what cities they live in, what fields they work in. So there's a lot of really cool things. You can say, say you're interested in living in New York when you graduate. Um, you can click on New York and see what are the common companies people work at, and then it'll show you alumni that meet, the, meet those criteria. So this helps if you're wanting to target a certain location, if you're really wanting to work at Starbucks corporate when you graduate, you can type in Starbucks and see alumni that work there. Um, or if you're trying to really learn about the Phoenix market, what are the common places people work, you can search by that, and then see alumni on there that you could potentially reach out to. So again, I think the alumni tool is really helpful because there's a lot of research you can do if you're trying to learn more about a certain industry, a certain a geographic location, or also if you know exactly what you wanna to do to find alumni that you can network with. Um, when you think about networking, you know, the purpose is you don't wanna be asking people for jobs. If you haven't met them in person, you don't want the first thing you do to say, hey, I see you work at Intel, I'm also interested in Intel, do you guys have any jobs? Because even though you might have that commonality of both having attended ASU, if that person doesn't know you and you're already asking for a job, they're less likely to want to reach back out to you. Well, if you reach out asking, I'd love you know, to talk to you for 10 minutes to learn a little bit about your career experience at Intel, I'm starting to develop my career experience. Um, they're probably more likely to reach out to you, especially because you have that ASU commonality. Um, or if there's, maybe you guys are both studying the same thing, maybe you're both electrical engineers. That's also another reason, something to bring up in the conversation. So when you're outreaching, now that you've identified people, maybe through the alumni tool as one source, um, say you come across, here's an example, Wendy, and you wanna reach out to her and send a message. So there's a couple ways to do this. With the free version of LinkedIn, you get a handful of free in-mails per month. Um, and I recommend there's a plenty that you can do on LinkedIn with the free version. You don't, know, you don't need to go and pay for the premium version. Um, so one trick around this is if you aren't able to in-mail somebody, because sometimes if you don't have connections in common, it might prevent you from sending a message to somebody, you can, send a connection request, but you wanna make sure that you personalize why you're reaching out. Um, you'd be surprised that people will you know, connect with you and if they don't say anything and you're like, I don't know who this person is, you're probably less likely to accept their request or respond back to them. So if I wanted to reach out to Wendy, I would wanna make sure that I personalize my request. The default is right here, it'll just say send now and they just get a request, but you wanna make sure that you click on add a note and that's where you send your personalized message. So as I mentioned earlier, the idea here is to reach out, so pretty much for an informational interview or to gain information about their experience. So again, it's not to ask Wendy, do you have any jobs and trying to find a job because it's very less likely that she's gonna reach back out to you if she doesn't know you already. So I probably would say, hi Wendy, um, I found your profile on the alumni tool on LinkedIn. I see that you attended ASU and studied um, psychology. And right now I'm currently a psychology student as well. I was wanting to know if you, I could talk to you for 10 minutes to ask you about your career path and how you got into the human resources field. Is that something I'm interested in? Let me know when you might have time in the next couple of weeks. So something very simple, very direct. Wendy knows exactly why you're reaching out, how you found her, you're bringing up the commonalities of ASU, the psychology major, um, and then you send the note. 
So something that is also important to know is not everybody's going to get back to you. Not everybody's active as active on LinkedIn. Um, and not everybody, even though they might receive your request, they don't all might not prioritize getting back to you. So don't take that as a bad thing. The idea here is that you don't want to just reach out to one person. You want to find, you know, find multiple people that you're interested in talking to about their career because hopefully by reaching out to a handful of people, you'll hear back from a couple of them. Um, and actually right now, what I've heard in the research is that with a lot of people working remotely due to what's going on in the, um, you know, global pandemic, um, people are more likely to have time to be able to connect via Zoom or other methods because they're at home, not traveling as much. Um, so that's one thing that I would note is don't just reach out to one person and wait for them to get back to you because some people may not get back to you for multiple reasons. So thinking about groups, um, I mentioned before, be joining the in crowd. So groups are a really powerful tool on LinkedIn for networking and also for learning more about, you know, the industries and careers you want to go into. So on here, on my profile, you can see a lot of supply chain management groups. Um, I've worked with those students in, in the past. So for example, the Institute of Supply Management, Council of Supply Chain Management Professionals. So if you're a student and you're thinking, I wanna go into supply chain, or I wanna go into human resources, I recommend joining the groups that relate to that career path of interest, that industry, that function, because it's gonna help you stay up to date with what's going on in that market, that industry, and then also too, a lot of these groups will do their own networking events as well. So you can see here for the Institute of Supply Management, the Arizona chapter, they had um, a February dinner meeting and they did a distribution tour. So these types of opportunities are really unique because even as a student, you have the opportunity to go and connect with a lot of professionals, learn about what they do, potentially in this opportunity, do a tour of, a, of an employer, see what their center looks like. So even during this time where maybe a lot of companies aren't open to the public or a lot of people aren't meeting in large groups, they're still doing virtual events, meetups, things like that. So I recommend joining because it's going to help you learn more about the industry. And then also, too, it's another way to find people in the field. So for example, Barb, if I was interested in learning about supply chain, this is another way I could find individuals in this group to reach out to and learn more about their career path. Um, part of networking is, we'll talk about it in a little bit, is maintaining those connections because then maybe in a couple months, there is a job. You see that Barb, you know, works at, um, let's see, we'll say she works at um, Avnet. Um, so maybe in a couple months, there is a job that's opened. I do reach back out to Barb and say, hey, Barb, you know, just wanted to follow up with you. I was just applying for this job at Avnet. I know that we've been talking the last couple months. Is there anyone specific you recommend that I follow up with at Avnet. Now that you have this connection, you've already built this relationship, she's probably 10 times more likely to be like, yeah, I'm happy to connect you to somebody or, oh, here's somebody in that department you could reach out to and let them know that, you know, I know you. So that's another way to think about building these relationships or even down the road. So when thinking about um, beyond alumni, there's other ways to build your network. So alumni is definitely one really powerful way because for students, for alumni, a lot of them have, you know, hopefully positive experiences as an Arizona State University student. They have large affinity to the university. So when somebody reaches out and says, I'm currently an ASU student, they're going to be 10 times more likely to reach back out because they think, oh, wow, I remember what it was like to be a student, figuring out what I wanted to do. I'm, you know, happy to talk to this student. So alumni is definitely a great way to start. But in addition to alumni, there's a lot of other people to think about when building your network. So I would say classmates are a really great one because a lot of times they have probably similar career interests and their networks are also networks that you could utilize as well. So think about your classmates. Um, and again, with LinkedIn, you don't wanna just go and add you know, all your friends. Some friends you know, make sense to add, but the idea is thinking about this being your professional network. Um, faculty, so again, not necessarily every faculty you've ever had, but if you have certain faculty that you really connected to well, they were a mentor to you, or they teach us up, they taught a subject that's really related to, say you want to go into um, zoology and they were your professor for that class, um, that could be a professor that makes sense because then it could help you maintain that relationship and somebody you could learn from. 
staff too, so university staff, um, because really you never know where that those connections could be. Because I will I will tell you as a you know staff at ASU for the last five years. Plus, there's been times that I've you know, been able to help students make connections, and it might not have been the most intuitive thing where you know, a student says, I'm really interested in the film industry in Los Angeles. And you know, through their research, they're like, oh, I see that you are connected to this person. And then I know the student, we have a good relationship. It makes me a lot more likely to say, yeah, I'm happy to connect you to my friend so you could talk to them about their experience. Um, so that's another one to think about. And then, as I mentioned before, friends and then family too. So thinking about your family, neighbors, you know, people, other people that you could start developing those relationships with, because linked um, networking is something that it's not just going to be you connecting to that one staff or that one neighbor, but then it's you building that relationship, the neighbors able to connect you to other people they know in the field, and then you're building your network that way as well. Um, and the idea with LinkedIn is it's a good place to, to manage networks too. You may be attending, I know there's a lot of virtual events going on right now, virtual networking events. You might be meeting a lot of employers on these events, adding them on LinkedIn, sending a message, reminding them how you met, maintaining those relationships through LinkedIn. That's another really helpful way to utilize the platform. All right, so I want to be conscious of time. So I'm going to talk a little bit now about maintaining relationships um, on LinkedIn and some things you can do once you've already started to build your network, how do you now maintain that network? So we'll talk a little bit about how do you lend a virtual hand with your connections, updating your status, um, requesting the informational interviews we've talked a little bit about already, how to use LinkedIn to research companies, do your homework, whether it be for an informational interview or for a real interview, um, and then the idea about stepping away from the computer when it makes sense. So on LinkedIn, when you log in, you'll see your news feed. So your news feed gives you an opportunity to post your own status updates, or you're going to see based on all your connections, what your connections are doing, their status updates, updates from the companies you're following, from the groups you're a part of. Um, so that's why I recommend you know, utilizing LinkedIn on a regular basis, because you're going to be able to keep up to date with what your network's doing. Um, and when I think about networking, I would say, well, it's important to get to know a lot of people and build relationships. It's also important that people know you. It's not just who you know, but who knows you. So with LinkedIn, if you're not very active on posting or um, being able to showcase what you've been doing, or you haven't been staying in contact with your connections, if it's been a couple of years, it might take a little bit before the that person remembers, oh yeah, I remember you were in my class a couple years ago, versus if you would try to maintain those connections. So here I just pulled two posts from my newsfeed. You see a student here um, just, you know, announced that they got a job at Airtable. Then you see a student here, Carlos, he announced that he's graduating, he's uh, maintaining his role at Intel. So this is a great way where you could easily like the post, you could comment on it, because this helps you maintain that relationship with Carlos. He's gonna remember, okay, Margaret, yeah, she liked my post, she maintained that, she's helping to maintain that relationship. Or maybe you send to Carlos, hey, Carlos, here's a great article I just read on um, transitioning to, from college to career. Thought it might be helpful for you now that you have a new job. Um, so those kinds of things help Carlos to remember, oh yeah, Margaret, I remember that student that I'd you know, knew I was at ASU. It helps because you're not just saying, hey, Carlos, can you tell me about getting a job at Intel now that you're working there? But it's saying, here's some great, you know, article I read recently that might be helpful for you. Then if a couple months down the road, I'm applying for a job at Intel, and I reach out to Carlos, he's probably a lot more likely to be able to want to help me or connect me to people to talk to you because we've already developed that relationship and it was not just one-sided on how can Carlos help me. So liking posts, posting your own posts. So the difference between LinkedIn and other social media is other social media you may talk about. What you know, trip you went on, what, you're, what you and your friends are doing. Here it's to think about the professional things you're doing. So here you see someone that got a job, somebody that is graduating. You might talk about a really cool conference you went to or an article you read. 
So any of those types of things you can post on LinkedIn. Um, there's actually, I'm, on my last slide, I have a link to university.linkedin.com. They have a lot of great resources and they also have a really cool editorial schedule. So if that's something that you're wanting to do is actively use LinkedIn to post updates, um, it gives different recommendations on topics that you can post about. Um, so as you're thinking about using LinkedIn to do your homework, so to speak, and this can be before informational interviews, before real interviews, there's a lot of great information on companies on LinkedIn. So one thing you can do is, of course, follow companies you're interested in. For example, here's two companies I'm following, Chewy.com and Apple. So by following them, I'm going to be up to date with what they're doing in my news feed. Um, I'm able to see different articles they post. It keeps me up to date with the industry. But then also, too, if you're really wanting to do a deep dive into Chewy.com and learn about what is this brand all about, they have videos, they have posts, you can see it'll tell you how many connections from ASU work there, any mutual connections that you might have. So there's really a lot of great tools on here. So if you're really targeting specific companies, this is another place where you might be able to find, you know, ASU alumni or second degree connections, meaning that I'm connected to Kelsey and Kelsey might be connected to Carlos. So I could say, hey, Kelsey, I see you're connected to Carlos that works at Chewy. Um, I'm interested in learning more about this, you know, e-commerce and I'm interested in Chewy. Could you connect me to him? So that's another way to utilize your network. It doesn't have to be just cold calling and reaching out to people. Um, but doing the research, there's a lot that you can do through LinkedIn. So when thinking about, you know, stepping away from the computer, um, I put this on here because there's a lot of, especially now, you know, the, the climate that we're in, a lot of things are being done by phone, by Zoom, um, you know, by email, but you want a lot of times, it's a lot easier to email questions and have email conversations, but I encourage trying to take it a step further. So think about setting up phone calls and Zoom meetings for your informational interviews. It can make those connections develop a lot quicker than if it's only through emailing questions. Sometimes it might not be that initial outreach because you're trying to start that connection, but thinking about stepping away from only communicating via email or via text. Um, I put the attending live events, of course, when applicable. Um, right now, really a lot of recruiting, it's really happening in the virtual space. So that's where I would say even attending these virtual events too. Um, I know there's some virtual career fairs going on. I know there's an alumni career mixer beginning of June. But going to these events are also great ways to, to practice your networking skills and really just to get out of just the one-to-one the -one and computer networking. Um, and then I also put on here sending handwritten notes. So this is, you know, I say something to think about how do you go above and beyond? How do you stand out among your colleagues or other students? So we've talked about different things in the profile and things that you can do to stand out with your summary, with your headline. Um, but if you're really trying to, if your goal is you want to work, um, let's say you want to work in Seattle, you want to work at, I mentioned um, Starbucks. So if that's your goal and you're doing some informational interviews with alumni you find on LinkedIn that work at Starbucks corporate, um, yeah, sending an email, an uh, electronic email is definitely something you need to do after that informational interview. But maybe it is you send, you know, a handwritten note or something that's unique that's going to really make you stand out. Um, so thinking about what can you do outside of the box to help you maintain and build those relationships over time. I think I have one more slide and then I'll open it up to some questions. So I mentioned the University of LinkedIn um, website. Let me see if I can show you what this looks like. So I really like this site because it gives you a lot of great resources they have for students. So this one I really like on the profile checklist. If you're wanting to um, make sure that you have all the pieces there. It'll give you tips on all the pieces of your profile, what to include, what not to include. It talks, um, a lot of the information I share about networking comes straight from this networking handout. Um, and then other pieces of LinkedIn too, if you're wanting to look at communicating effectively, really branding yourself. Um, there's a lot that you can learn from, from this website. Let me pull my slides. All right, so what about any, let's see, Kelsey, have there been any questions that have come through? 
Hey, yes. Um, it looks like there was a question about the extracurricular activities that you might list on your LinkedIn. Um, you know, should they be a range of activities like sports, cultural activities, or is your suggestion that they should be a little bit more um, career relevant? Great question. So I think a little bit of both. So something to think about with your LinkedIn is similar to your resume. If you've been in school for a couple of years now, I wouldn't necessarily include things from high school. So if you were on the soccer team in high school, but now you're going into your junior year at ASU, I would really focus on the involvement that you have now that you're a college student. And that can include anything from athletics you're on, whether it be intramurals or it's sports teams that you play on or you help to coach, or if you're part of ASU organizations, community organizations. So really it's, I would say employers like to see that diverse student that has interests across multiple things. So of course the career related experience and skills is, is important because it's gonna help you further develop in your field, but having those other interests and experiences are gonna be helpful. I would just say not to go back too far because they're not gonna be as impressed with what you did when you were 14 if you're now finishing up your degree. Great question. Any other questions, feel free to um, put them in the chat. We've got, oh, great. Um, should I have omit that I attended ASU online? I know these are some, there are sometimes stigmas about online classes, um, although this seems to be changing. Would including this hurt my chances of securing a job? Great question. Yeah, great question. I would say absolutely not. You don't need to admit that at all. Um, what really, when employers are looking at your LinkedIn or your resume and they're um, sourcing candidates, they're most interested in like, what did you learn? What skills do you have to offer? They're not looking at, oh, you did your degree just online. Because as you, as you said, yes, that stigma is definitely something I would say several years ago. You know, maybe it's like, okay, you just did classes online. Nowadays, employers, they're, they're just as interested in online students as they are in students that attend a class on ground. It's gonna be, can you still effectively communicate and present yourself in the most effective way? That's really what they're looking at. How are you gonna present in the interview? Do you understand our company, our industry? Um, can you talk about the skills you've developed as a student? Um, so that's really what they're looking at. They're not gonna look at, oh, you did online classes. So great question. There's another question about updating skills. Can I update my skills in my resume even if there are no certificates for them? Yeah, great question. So as long as you know the skill, absolutely. You don't want to list things. Maybe you're learning how to do, do I mentioned Tableau earlier. Maybe you want to learn that this summer. You may not want to list it if you don't know anything about it yet and you're starting to learn it. But if you're like, yeah, I definitely know how to do some of the basic functions in it, I would definitely include that on there. And if you're applying a specific job and they mention like advanced Tableau or advanced, you know, Python, you can put, you know, beginner and you can put exactly what you know in the, in the function and it makes you feel more comfortable to let them know up front. Um, because part of technology too is your willingness to, to learn and that's what employers look for. Another one about how do you go about sending a handwritten note? And can you just send a picture of it? Yeah, great question. Um, so I would say, so this is something I, I mentioned like going above and beyond. So if you're building a relationship and you know, like, okay, I mentioned the Starbucks example, and you know this person, um, say it's, you know, Jane Smith that works at Starbucks and you've been talking to her um, and you are like, okay, wow, I've really developed this relationship. She's been really helpful, giving me a lot of information. You can send it to the Starbucks headquarters. I wouldn't send it to their personal address. Um, and in terms of handwritten note, it would just be like a, you can go like to anywhere, Target, Walmart, just buy a stationery that you'll see like a note card and an envelope. It doesn't have to be anything special. Um, but that's something where it's just something that's different. Again, sending the email, I would say that's, that's good, good enough. But if you're trying to think, I really want to make sure I can maintain this relationship, just something to think about. And it looks like that is all of our questions. Any other, I'll give a few more seconds for folks to put anything else into the Q&A box into the chat. Um, but thank you guys so much for attending this session.
We're going to follow up with a link of the recording for the session and you will also be receiving a quick survey um, to help give some feedback on the session for what we can improve for future sessions of this. Um, and please don't forget to check out the rest of the webinars in the series. We, um, I have that link that I posted in the beginning of the chat. All right. Oh, one more. What are some common beginner mistakes with LinkedIn? Yeah, great question. I would say the beginner mistakes are if it's your first time starting an account, trying to start networking right away, you want to start with not only creating your profile, but starting to build your relationships on LinkedIn. Because as I mentioned, sometimes it's harder to reach out to people if you don't have any connections yet on LinkedIn. So that's one thing where some students might be like, I, have, I can't connect with anybody because you haven't yet started to develop your own um, set of connections. I would say the other thing would be similar to just informational interviews in general is just reaching out and not being thoughtful in your message. It, I know that when you're doing a lot of outreach, it can be easy to say, I just want to say the same thing to everybody. But if you take the time to look at their profile, figure out their background and say something unique to that, it's going to make that person 10 times more likely to reach back out to you because they know, oh wow, they really took the time to, to learn about me and know why they're reaching out. So I would say that's probably the biggest thing is the outreach piece. Great. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. And thank you to Margaret for um, facilitating this great session on LinkedIn. And I think you saw, um, and maybe Margaret, you can go back to your last slide. Margaret has her um, email address on the last slide if you wanted to send her um, an email following up on any of this. She is available to take additional questions. Um, if not, thank you guys all for being here. Bye-bye. Oh, yes, we will send the recording. Yeah, we'll send the recording out to everybody, as well as a copy of the slides. Mm -hmm. Thank you.